you. I'm here with Boston Marathon race director Dave McGilvery. I know you've been all over this course today. Mm -hmm. Give us a sense how these conditions, A, we see how they're affecting the runners physically, but what kinds of things are you looking for? Well, the exact same things. Um, hypothermia is the key here. I mean, for me, it was a lot about uh, before the gunfight and how they were um, resting in the athlete's village, in the elements, staying dry, staying warm. And a lot of people came to the starting line shivering. And obviously, they're losing energy there. Right. So we know that down course, they're maybe starting off with uh, three quarters of a tank. So it wouldn't surprise me at all if there are a lot of dropouts in today's race. So now we're gearing up for picking up those athletes and, and um, increasing our number of medical sweep buses out on the course. and maybe even opening up some of our reception centers along the course that we um, set up in advance in order if there's an, a course evacuation or something. But now that's not a course evacuation, but we need to get people inside and get them warm so that they don't get hypothermia. So you're saying we may, we may have enough people who need that kind of medical help that we use the reception centers, move them inside. It might be too much for the medical tents. Right, and, and, and that's always been a, you know, conundrum and that is we have the greatest medical team on the planet but we can't fit 30,000 people in in our medical tent you know so you know the whole idea is to have them take personal responsibility and dress properly but you know a anything can happen I mean even some people on our lead vehicle just are in the medical tent with hypothermia on the lead vehicle Has that doing ever our job. Before? no no and it, what was interesting too is that the pace of the runners changed a lot uh, as you saw the slower times yep. and then the lead vehicles for the men i was on the men's lead vehicle and we were getting closer and closer to the women's leaders and we're getting worried about are we going to be even be able to pass them on the course now we're weaving in and out of other athletes so it was a very different dynamic today than i've seen it in the last 30 years yeah i mean i can't even imagine because so much of this for you is about planning for what might happen mm -hmm. then you're in the race you're still having to adjust those plans as you go in terms of what you're going to be doing the next few hours where do you go mainly into our operation center just to sort of um hear what's coming back to us okay. from the course so we can make some intelligent decisions as to how to respond and how to react um even though we have plans for everything, A, B, C, and D, and crises management and everything else, um, this is very different than what we've ever experienced, uh, at least in, in my time being involved. Particularly because we still have hours that these runners are going to be out on the course. Yeah, and, and you know, who knows what the, I don't know if the conditions are going to deteriorate or get better, but, um, you know, if they stay the same, you know, we'll get a certain amount of, you know, casualties, if you will, which means medical issues. If they get worse, then we have to start thinking of alternative plans. How does it work with the sweet buses? Are they actually going to head out to the course and then they hit the various medical tents to pick up? Yeah, I mean, that's the thing is um, we can only pick up people who are at the medical stations because they're on the perpendiculars where we can get to those stations. You can't have vehicles driving down course in between all the runners. So there's a very sophisticated plan as to how we do this. But again, they can get over overwhelmed too. And, um, and there's, there's little heat out there on the course. So we're dealing with that. So a lot of different moving parts and everyone's working as hard as they can to you know, keep people safe. Well, I, I hate to even ask this question, but your tradition is running the Boston Marathon from Hopkinton all the way into where we're sitting after most people finish. Is that still the plan? Well, it's the plan, but um, my number one priority is the race and the runners here, and I want to make sure that everything is safe and everyone's okay before I even remotely consider going back out there myself. So. I mean, this could be a year where it doesn't happen if if um, I feel that they need me more here than than me going out there. But we'll have to make that decision in the next couple of hours. Well, there's no question. You run the best organized race in the world. Uh, all the work that you put into it pays off out here. And we just so appreciate you spending a few minutes with us on such a busy race day. Well, it's a team effort. Uh, you know, everything f from senior management to the board to the organizing committee, and I give it all the credit to the volunteers out there, spectators. I mean, it was the lowest I've ever seen out there, but there was still a lot of spectators out there, and they're enduring this too. So kudos to all of them for, um, for being tough and being Boston strong and showing the rest of the country the perseverance and the toughness 
that we have in these in this part of the country. It is definitely a test of endurance today and resilience. It sure is. Dave McGilvery, our race director for the Boston Marathon. We're going to take a quick break in our coverage here. We'll be back right after this. Oh, 